Welcome to the Roughnecks. Rico's Roughnecks! If you were around during 1997 and watched this absolute gem of a movie, you were probably begging for someone to make a good game adaptation of it. Well, I am happy to report the day has come. Let's talk about Starship Troopers Extermination. So, Offworld Industries are the developers behind this high octane, bug squishing new first person shooter. They are the same developers behind the hit title Squad, and they've really captured the essence of the original Starship Troopers movie. To the point where in every match I played, all the other players couldn't help but let me know. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. Would you like to know more? The game is currently in early access and offers three game modes. Number one is AAS, where you have to capture territory for the Federation and build a foothold on the planet. Number two is ARC, where you have to build a base and fuel the ARC scanner, or ARC scanner, to gather intel on the bug tunnels. And finally, Horde Mode, fortify defenses against a relentless horde of the Arachnids. Now they all share a very similar theme and can be played in one of four difficulty options. You drop down onto a hostile planet such as Klandathu or Valaka with your team that currently consists of 16 players, split up into four squads of four. You then have to fight your way through the endless Arachnids and hold your ground at the end location once you've built a base. The game offers joint base building where you can use team resources called ore collected throughout the mission to place 3D rendered schematics on the ground for you and your team to build. You then have to defend your base from the onslaught of arachnids for the duration of the time until the extraction ships arrive to take you off planet. The Horde and the Arc game mode currently cuts out the middleman and you begin at the base building phase. If you manage to survive the mission, you then have to fight your way to the dropships and survive until liftoff. And once you've done that, it's game over, man! Oh, that's the wrong franchise. I mean, it's a uh, mission accomplished. <laughs> what I have noticed is that on the main menu is this currently greyed out button that says War Map. Now, the community have been speculating about what this could be, with suggestions being made that it could be something similar to the Galactic Conquest game mode from Battlefront 2. However, I would much rather it be something more like Planet Side 2's War Map, where there is a huge constant war being fought with hundreds of players on one large seamless map. Whether they're going to go for that we just don't know but it would be absolutely incredible. Moving on, the game currently offers three classes of infantry that you can play as which offer different abilities and weapons. Firstly we have the Hunter which is an assault type class with a jump jet, higher running speeds and weapons such as assault rifles or snipers for long range engagements. Next, we have the Bastion, which is the Heavy class. It offers heavy armor and a siege mode where you can place a small defensive barricade that encircles you, holding you in place, and offers protection. Weapons-wise, it offers the standard assault rifles along with a heavy machine gun that packs a huge magazine capacity of 200 rounds. Finally, we have the Operator class, which is outfitted with an extra canister slot and medical UAV. The extra canister slot allows you to carry more or resource canisters for your team's base building. And the medical drone is exactly what it says on the tin, providing medical attention for you and your team whilst also having the ability to revive them when they're downed. Again, you have the choice of the standard assault rifles or a grenade launcher for some explosive area damage to help with crowd control. All classes currently share the same grenades and sidearm options, but they do have a few variations when it comes to perks and utility items. Now I quite like this as they've kept the classes down to three rather than the usual five we see in similar game setups such as Battlefield. They have merged the Medic and Engineer into one, which is the Operator class, and they have also merged the Assault and Recon roles into one, which is the Hunter class. However, the Heavy Boy is still the Heavy Boy. Moving on, each mission has a chance of various mutators occurring, which keeps each gameplay scenario feeling fresh and different with a variety of bug difficulties to deal with and also some player power-ups to have fun with. And for now, that is about it in regards to what this game currently has to offer. That being said, this is reflected in the early access price tag of 24.99 Great British Pounds over here in the UK, which works out to be about $33, $34 over in the US. Personally, I'm really excited to see where this game goes over the next quarter. We've all seen how far Squad has come along since release, and I have to be honest, I am absolutely praying that the war map in Starship Troopers 
is the same as like a planet side 2 game mode where it's just an open battle that's constantly going on i pray it's that but i very highly doubt it if you've enjoyed the video today please kick the like button straight in the balls for me and consider subscribing to the channel for more content from me if you'd like to see more of this game or you'd like to see me play any other space related game which is what my channel is all about mostly star citizen but any space related game will go starfield's going to be fun when that comes out let me know in the comments below as always thank you very much for watching stay safe and i'll see you in the next one peace